before you take your seats, grab your Bibles. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles. We've been in the series. Look at your neighbor while you're grabbing your Bible and just say, neighbor, work the word or it'll work you. I'm still in Matthew chapter 22. I'm still in verse 37, 38, 39, and 40. I'll read 36 just for clarity. Matthew chapter 22, 36 through 40. You need this scripture. You're not going to be able to do nothing without this scripture. You can't serve in this ministry without this scripture. You can't please God without this scripture. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Matthew chapter 22, beginning with verse 36. The Bible says, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said unto him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is likened unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. On your way to your seat, just look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I hope you're working good. Because if not, it's going to work you. Woo, God. I thank God for the first lady. Let's let's show her some love this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed faith, we are in a defining moment where God is transitioning us from a house of maintenance, uh, a vision that he has always given us. See, what the challenge is, is that many want to be in maintenance and don't want to be challenged to be in vision. Let me say that again. Many want to be in maintenance and don't want the challenge of being in vision. And the Bible declares, I feel God already. Uh, the Bible declares where there is no vision, people perish. And so, short, we perish in maintenance, but we thrive in vision. Hallelujah. We perish in maintenance, but we thrive in vision. Vision is the thing that allows us to see past where we are, past our circumstances, past what we think, past what people think about us, past what people think is going to happen or is not going to happen. Vision is something that allows you to be able to look into the future and even your now have hope and something to build for. Vision takes you out of depression. I feel God. Vision takes you out of the slump. Vision takes you out of that, that down place. Vision removes you from your frailties. Vision takes you out of your inabilities. Vision allows you to progress to a place that you thought never possible. I need about 35 folks in here that say I need a vision. Vision allows you to see what the eye can't see. Vision allows you to move in scripture because the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Vision is beyond your natural eye. Vision is something that you have to connect in the Holy Ghost to be able to see because your mind is only going to allow you to go so far. But vision will put you up on a mountain you never saw before 
and allow you to progress in areas that you thought not possible. Vision will cause you to be healed. Vision will cause you to be delivered. Vision will cause you to be set free. Sometimes all you got to do is see yourself free and God begins to move you to freedom. I ain't get nobody in here. Slap your neighbor and tell him you got to change what you see. I figured out the problem with some folks is some folks can't see past the drama that they dealing with right now. But when God gives you vision, you don't see the drama. You see the helper that's get in the drama and help you out of the drama. Look at your name and say, I need vision. I'm getting too excited too fast. Uh, touch somebody. Make sure everybody on your row want vision. Because if everybody on your row don't want vision, you on the wrong row. You close to perish. Ask somebody, is there perish on this row? Or is there vision on this row? Because I don't want to be close to nothing that's getting ready to die. I don't want to be close to nothing that's getting ready to give up. I don't want to be close to nothing that's getting ready to throw in the towel. But if you still got some fight in you, it's time for me to see past what I've been seeing. It's time for me to see past what I could and could not do. And it's time for me to believe God's word. I don't know who this for. I don't know. I don't know. But I just feel it in my And I'm probably going to say it about 10 times till somebody catches it and, and gets the vision. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things things that ought to get in somebody's belly cause them to be risen up through Christ who strengthens me I can do all things well let me testify then since y'all gonna act bougie they told me when you have a felony you ain't gonna be able to do nothing you can't sell real estate you can't be in the med medical field but I looked back and said I can do I don't care what you say. The Bible says that God will vindicate the righteous. That's not just spiritually. That's naturally. And what they said I couldn't do, I'm doing all that and some more right now. Because I can do. <laughs> I can do all things. You got to have a vision of quitting that habit you got to have a vision of getting out of that relationship you got to have a vision of rising above your family you got to have a vision of getting up out of that job you got a vision of getting that new car you got to have a vision of getting that new house you got to have a vision of a healthy marriage you got to have a vision of a fat bank account I ain't getting nobody to holler in here and that's why you broke because all you see is negative signs on your Wells Fargo account. When I see mine, I see zero after zero after zero after zero. I, I guess I'm by myself in here. I feel like logging on right now and speaking to my bank account because I have a vision. Does anybody, y'all sitting in here quiet, I promise, like going home, look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm tired of you sitting there acting like God ain't doing nothing for you. You better get a vision because God wants to bless you, but you can't see past where you are. Somebody ought to be losing their mind and going crazy right now because you just got a glimpse of what God wants to do for you. High five somebody and say, I'm going to catch a vision up in here. I got a vision. I got a vision. I got a vision of a credit score of 800, y'all. People ain't going to talk to me in here. I don't care what FICA say right now. I got a vision. Got a vision. I got a vision. And some of you got vision and you don't even know it because you be on Facebook and you post memes that say relationship goals, you know. And you trying to get to a certain place and you tell your spouse, that could be us. It's because you see past where you are. 
and you have the ability to be able to connect with God. This is what God is telling us in this text, to love God with all you got. In other words, forget about the value that people has put on you. I came to give you a reappraisal today because God has made some repairs in your life and you don't even know it. God has gotten out the terramites. He's pulled out all the wreckage. He's began to redo your heart. Your thinking has begun to change and you don't even know you're a different building because every time you look in the mirror you see the same person. But God sees you in a different light because God has a vision for you. God has eyes that you don't have and he's ready to reassess you. Look at your neighbor and say, it's appraisal time. I know these are real estate terms, whatever. But appraisal is when they come out and they assess how much value your, your house is. And most of the time what they do is they do something called a comparative market analysis. They're, they're comps. And what they do is they try to look at other houses that are the size of your house and has similar things to try to obtain a value. But that's not how God values us. Woo! The Bible says, for God so loved, y'all ain't in here, the world that he gave his only begotten son. God values us above property, values us above anything in this world. What is man that God is mindful unto him? It is God now that created us. It is God that wanted a relationship with us. It is God that wants to commune with us. What is man that God would pay attention to us? God wants to communicate with us in prayer. God wants us to worship him. God wants us to praise him. God wants us to magnify him. And God wants to bless us. I ain't getting no help in here because we've been taught that God wants to judge us. But God doesn't want to judge us. If he wanted to judge us, he would have never sent his son. He said, who doesn't believe? You're already condemned. But if you believe you got blessings coming, you just got to change your vision. I'm in the wrong house. Push your neighbor and tell him, change your vision. Matter of fact, look at him because I didn't feel the break yet. And tell him, fix your face. God has already changed your situation. You just need to catch up with it. If you keep seeing the same thing, God can't do nothing. Look at your neighbor again and tell him, give God something to work with frozen out there and let him bless it throw a vision out there and let him water it throw a vision out there and let him work with something God work with me I need to get to the place that I love God with everything I got in other words, I'm not concerned with how the world feels about me. I really don't need a whole lot of friends at this moment because friends are not the people who are going to create a new heart in me. Friends are not the people who is going to regulate my mind. Friends are not the people that are going to bring emotions under subjection. I need to take the mind of David and say, purge me with hyssop that I might be clean. Why? me that I might be whiter than snow. I just want to be close to God. I just want to be close to God. We spent too much time trying to please people. We spent too much time trying to live up to the standards of people and people's opinion. But the truth of the matter is people don't have no heaven or hell to put you in. People don't have any blessings to give you other than God telling them to bless you. People ain't it. Look at somebody and tell them you ain't it. I know you think you all that, and you was probably talking about me before you came in here, but you ain't all that. You could do all that talking. It's all good. It don't even, I appreciate you talking about me. It's cool. You help me tell my testimony because the lies that you tell on me is not what people are going to see. More people came to this church to see what people was talking about, and then when they got here, they never left. Oop. Ha, 
Hallelujah. Because when they got here, they ran into a real God. Then they got here, they ran into some people that ain't tripping off a whole lot of stuff. They ran into some people that are just trying to get to God like they are. We don't have time to worry about your drama. The only thing we could do is bring your drama to the altar so that your drama can get alterated. Look down your row and tell them we all got some stuff. Tell them, don't sit there and look at me like that. Don't, don't sit there and look at me like that. If we put your business on the screen back there, we all be going, ooh, check this out. If we put your business on the screen, we'd be like, you did that? Mm, hallelujah. We all got some issues. But when we get to God, God transitions our issues from an issue to a testimony. What's happening here is the devil is trying to take us out of a place of transparency and put us into a place of hiding. And the reason why he's doing that is because as long as you're in hiding, you can't testify. So he wants you to be ashamed of your past and not talk about it because in not talking about it, you're not connecting with God and you're not connecting with people. See, when you connect with God, when you connect with God, you don't care what people say anymore. <laughs> when people say, oh, I'm testified, pastor, I say, okay, your connection is weak. Oh, y'all, y'all, whatever. I ain't scared of you. Uh, you know, on the cell phone, it got bars. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And sometimes you only got one bar and you be trying to move around. Try to get a better signal because better signal says better connectivity. Ask your neighbor how many bars you got. LTE, 4G, what you got? What you got? What you got? What you got? District missionary, I want nobody praying for me with one bar. You better get some connectivity up in this joint. You better have four bars. Them bad boys better be green. Now ask your neighbor, how's your connectivity? We going somewhere here. How, how's your connectivity? Because part of the problem is most of the time when we talk to people, there's no signal. Y'all ain't, ain't saying nothing. That's why we can't connect because you ain't got no signal. That's why we can't get along because you don't have no signal. That's why we can't work together because you ain't got no signal. You need to get closer to the connection so you can get some bars so we can talk. I got bars. Yeah, look down your row, high five somebody and say, I got bars. Yeah, yeah, that's another shirt. I got bars. Hallelujah. I got bars because I'm connected to God. I got bars because I got a prayer life. I got bars because I don't mind fasting. I got bars because I ain't scared to worship. I got bars because I'll praise the Lord anywhere. I got bars because I love God. You love God. Y'all sit down. I got a little work to do here. I need to get connected. I need to get connected. Love the Lord your God with all. I can't have low bars and don't make it. And y'all see some of y'all every Sunday. You be coming in here. You be coming here dragging. Woo. It's because that bad boy is red. And we come in church on Sunday. You got a charger? It went into battery save mode because some of us need to replug back in. Hallelujah. We ain't got no power. We ain't got no signal. And we try to find somebody else's charger because you done left your charger at home. 
but I like something called constant power. In other words, I stay plugged in. I don't have to look for a charger. I don't have to plug in because I've been plugged in all time. Somebody holler, I got to get connected. You ought to grab five people and just ask them, are you connected? Are you connected? Are you, are you connected? Hallelujah. Are you connected? Hooked up with the power source. Your face wouldn't look like that if you was connected. Your attitude wouldn't be so bad if you was connected. You wouldn't treat people so bad if you was connected. You wouldn't have an attitude at work if you was connected. I need 45 folks here to holler, get connected. I feel God. Look down your row and say, we got connection problems. Yeah. Yeah. The next time somebody walk up to you and they looking sour about the face, go, ooh, you got connection problems. They got an attitude at work. Oh, you got low bars. I understand. Look at your neighbor and say, check your bars, check your bars. Pastor said something, they folded their arms. Check your bars. How many bars you got? You got four bars? All right. How, how many bars y'all got? He fully charged. He waving that thing. I'm ready to go. I dare you say something. I fool around and praise in your face. Won't he will? <laughs> God. Folk that got bars, it don't take much. Folk that got bars, all you got to do is say, J. That's some folks with some bars in here. I didn't even say his name. I just said, J. They know where you're getting ready to go. Hallelujah. When you can touch and agree in the spirit because you're connected. Sometimes you don't even have to say nothing. You could just. When I. See, see right there. You can look the row and see if anybody got bars. Because if they thought about it, they hollering right about now. I'm wondering, has anybody thought about the goodness of Jesus? I'm having way too much fun. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to get connected. things y'all leave me alone one of the things and no shade against android understand where I'm getting ready to go here one of the things that I absolutely love about my iPhone my iPad and my iMac is when I write a note on my iPhone, it syncs to the cloud, and when I get home, I could put down my iPhone, pick up my, and I got the same note. If I put my iPad down and go to my office and open up my iMac, I got the same note. Why is it that we in church and we don't have the same note? No signal. And some of y'all, y'all, you know, your different providers, y'all be fussing at them. I can't stand Sprint. Sprint don't work over here. 
That's why you need to get T-Mobile. You know, we, we Verizon. Uh, what they say? Can, can you hear me now? <laughs> he over at Sprint now. <laughs> can you hear that? <laughs> Everything sinks. Everything works together. I type a document here, press save, pick up my phone, leave the house, documents on my phone. There's a synchronization that happens because we're connected to the cloud. Watch this. As long as the internet is working. I'm not going to try to work this too much. <laughs> Internet. <laughs> that means that there's an internal network <laughs> that's connected that causes everything to communicate. In other words, this ain't about your exterior appearance of God. It's about your internal flow with God. Because when you're connected to the internet, there's something called a fire signal. It means if you're not connected by Cat5, you can still pick it up in the airwaves. What are, what are you saying? When you're not hardwired in church and you're outside, you ought to have a Wi-Fi connection with God to stay synchronized with what the Holy Ghost is doing according to his word. Oh. So what happens now is, let me make uh, this defining statement. Uh, we need to connect to God in an authentic, personal relationship. Can I say this? Connecting to God is not just connecting to blessed faith. I'm glad your name roll. I'm glad you have chosen Blessed Faith to be your place of residence. But please don't misunderstand Blessed Faith. Blessed faith is only the conduit. Watch this now. A conduit is, is a pipe that wires go in. Uh, a pipe protects the wire. It, it protects the stress and the integrity of the wire over time. Because if the wire is exposed, what happens is rats and other animals eat at the cable and cause a connection. So you need a conduit to protect the wire. Because rats are out there trying to destroy your relationship with God. Y'all ain't even in this house today. And so blessed faith is the conduit which we direct and connect you and protect your relationship with God. You have to have a personal connection. Listen, there is no way, there is no way, there is no way in my house that I can have an iPad and my wife don't have an iPad. Because we can't share well. One of us is going to get frustrated because we need to make the connection and we been, ain't been on in a long time and we need to see what's going on. What we need is we need our own personal device. <laughs> y'all, y'all ain't in here. <laughs> because, 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 you know, with your own personal device, it's your responsibility to keep it charged. Because if we had to share devices, one of us is going to pass it to the other with a low battery. Because we didn't use this so much, and now that we're tired, of, we pass it off because we didn't got all the juice out of it, and it's going to cause an argument. <laughs> I 
I hear her talking to me back there. I about to say something else, Sam, but I'm going to turn this corner. Hallelujah. I'm trying to have a peaceful night. Woo, it was coming. It was coming. <laughs> Some, look at your neighbor and say personal relationship. Look on the other side and say personal relationship. Now, I'm going to give you permission to preach for about 30 seconds, and then you become a lay member again. You understand me? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's nobody's responsibility but your own to develop relationship with God. All right, I just snatched your license. Hallelujah. Now you a lay member again. It's nobody's responsibility but your own. You need to take the responsibility off the church and stop being lazy. They don't teach that over there. They not teaching me here. You need to line up with the Bible and let the word work for you where it says study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not be ashamed rightly. Woo! I felt the tension rise in here. Right dividing the word of truth look at your neighbor and ask him a question do you own a bible I'm not talking about the family bible you know the big white one that sit on the coffee table that got dust on it I ain't talking about that do you got your own bible that you worked out so much that the pages are falling out that it's got highlighters everywhere see I like to see beat up bibles that means somebody been doing some work in that book and if you got an electronic bible it still ought to be marked up Look at somebody else and say, do you have your personal Bible? Because it's hard to have a personal relationship without a personal Bible. <laughs> oh, all right, let me, let me walk this out. I ain't got past point one. Hallelujah. Connect to God an authentic personal relationship. Say this with me. Connect to God. In an authentic personal relationship. Can't nobody do this for you. Love God. With all your heart. With all your mind. With all your soul. Ask your neighbor, have you made the connection? Most of the time when you get a cell phone or a new iPad, when you get it, it's halfway charged. And they tell you the first thing you need to do before you use this device is charge it to a full capacity. Most of the time I never did it. And three months into using my phone, my battery wasn't no good. It's happened to some of y'all. Because we didn't have no patience to wait till it was fully charged. We was just anxious to get our fingers on it, to start surfing through it, to see what it do. One of the reasons why many of us can't have an authentic relationship with God is because we don't know how to follow instructions. It got thick in here again. We need to learn how to follow instructions. Father Hunt, who, you know, was a, a pillar in the North Highlands Church, uh, always used to say something to us young people. He say, shut up and follow instructions. <laughs> follow. You got to get that right. Follow. Shut up and follow instructions. And I'll never forget it the first time he said it to me. I'm in the house. I'm minding my own business. And he gets a stool and, and gets up on top of his fence. Now he can see my backyard. Elder Davis! <laughs> Sir, we are not in the country. <laughs> I'm in my living room minding my own business. And I hear it again. Elder Davis! I'm like, who is this? Who is this? I go to the front yard. Ain't nobody out there. I said, you got to be kidding me. You know, I got a little South Central. Who in my backyard? I go to the back, open the door. Ella Davis, come here. 
I'm like, oh my God, you can't have no peace in your own house. I walk up to the fence and he said, it's time for prayer. So come on over to my house and we getting ready to pray. You said, little mad kid. I was about to have a bowl of cereal. I go over to his house. I said, well, what's the problem? He said, ain't no problem. You come on in here. We getting ready to pray. I said, all right. I'm getting ready to go sit on. When I get to the couch, he pushed me down. We pray on our knees. Right about now, I'm too mad to pray. <laughs> Don't push me down. You got me out of my comfortable house, and now you're going to push me? Got down on my knees. I'm waiting for him to start. Push me. Come on, elder. Pray. You an elder in the Lord's church. <laughs> and impromptu, I had to pray in my mind before words start coming out of my mouth. Father, <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Over the course of the next few minutes, things begin to happen. Mother Hunt came out the back. She dropped down on her knees. Uh, we start praying. Everybody start praying. Mother start speaking in tongues. Y'all got to understand, she was one of them old mothers. And so when she started speaking in tongues, I got nervous. Because it wasn't none of that handarabo shah, you know. Wasn't none of that stuff you heard before. Hallelujah. And she starts speaking in tongues, and I got nervous. Next thing you know, she laying hands on me, and I felt the power of the Holy Ghost. I start crying for nothing. Hallelujah. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm crying. He rubbing on my back. I start speaking in tongues, and we all in there. We just going in. We get up. We start hugging each other. Everybody's still speaking in tongues. Father Hunt leads me to the door. He's still speaking in tongues. He pushed me out the door and closed the door. I'm walking home. <laughs> Three days later, I hear it again. Elder Davis! I'm like, not today, player. Not today. I walk outside. What can I do for you? Dad, he said, you know, the Spirit of the Lord told me that it's my responsibility as a father and a general to make sure that you're good and connected with God. <laughs> Woo. We got to have a personal, authentic relationship with God. The second part of that connection, listen to this. Y'all not going to like this. Y'all not going to like it. It's to connect with others for the purpose of fellowship and the breaking of bread according to the word. To connect to others for the purpose of fellowship and the breaking of bread of, uh, with others. And so it's not good enough just to hook up with two or three people, develop your own little clique and y'all fellowship and y'all get deep. But you'll never share that deep nobody else. Y'all so deep you sinking. You're sinking because you've gotten too deep and too heavy and you're not pouring it into anybody else. You, if you deep, you ought to give it away. If you deep, it's because you got substance in you that the next person needs. And if you deep, you ought to be deep enough to know how to communicate with others without offending them for the purpose of pouring into them to grow them up to a fully developed follower of Jesus Christ. Wisdom is the principal thing. And all thy getting, get an understanding. The problem that I have now is with the generational uh, breakdown. When people are saying, I don't understand old folks. And old folks are saying, I don't understand these young people. And nobody's working the text and all thy getting. 
We don't need a seminar. We don't need to understand baby boomers, X generation, millennials. We don't need to do that. We need to get an understanding. We need to sit down. We need to talk with one another. Can I say this? Without the generals, without the elders, we wouldn't be standing here right now. You don't have to clap. I ain't even starting to know that without the elders of the village, none of us would be sitting here right now. None of us would even have the right to sit here right now. And so regardless if you... You think in your mind that they ain't done nothing, you don't respect them or whatever. Respect the fact that you have breath in your body. Because if it wasn't for them, most of us wouldn't even be living. And, and I'm going to just be frank. And y'all y'all probably going to say, oh, he didn't went ghetto on us. One of the problems of the gangs today is that the OGs are 35. I ain't saying nothing. I come from a very organized structure. You, you know, you can say what you want about South Central and you can hate on it. But one of the things is the OGs wouldn't let the baby G's do certain stuff. Yeah, I know y'all ain't clapping. That Some of y'all, this is beyond you. It's cool. I mean, we even had rules. Dope game. If you was pregnant or under a certain age, they wouldn't even sell it to you. Y'all can say what you want. The OGs put things in perspective. And now that we didn't come into the church, we trying to kick the generals out. We trying to bury the generals before they times. We think we know everything. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And this is why we can't get connected. It's because we trying to get rid of the generals and the OGs. And I got offended the other day, Brother Trent, because I was in the store and this young man walked past me. He said, what's up, OG? I was like, well, wait a minute. I, I went on back and I caught little homie at the register. I said, man, come here, man. I said, why? Be quiet. Watch your tone. Why? Go on, sit down. You ain't got no room to just sit down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm an elder in the Lord's church. Sit down. <laughs> Be quiet and further instructions. I walked over there. I said, young man, I I'm just curious. You mean, you don't know nothing about me. Why would you call me an OG? He said, first of all, OG. I could tell that you've been through something. I said, really? He said, you ain't from around, are you? I said, no. You know, I'm getting real humble now. <laughs> humble, humble cake is coming my way. I said, no, I'm not from around. I'm from Los Angeles. He said, I could tell because uh, you, you walk with a certain confidence see in the neighborhood no more I was messed up I was messed up I, and so I continued conversation with him I said man well where are you from and he told me where he was from no business of yours praise the Lord and uh, I said well why are you out there he said because I don't I don't really have nobody hide me to look up to so I do what I know Broke my heart. How can you say you don't have nobody to look up to? I get it. Because the generals are too looking at the young people because they can't understand why they do the things that they do. So we got two generations that don't understand each other and won't talk to each other because they don't feel that they're respected. The young guy don't get it because his grandma died. Big mama gone. Y'all ain't in here. My great-grandmother was almost 101 when she passed away. We called her Big Mama. When she came into the room, she had a very soft voice. But when she spoke, everybody shut up. And if you didn't, you got the strongest backhand that you ever seen. In, ah, you didn't even know where it came from. 
Now we got parents that say, I'm not going to whip my kids. Listen, I understand that your parent might have been a little bit abusive, but you can't stream to the other side because the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. Listen, listen, you, you can mark my word. If you, if you discipline the child properly, the child will love you more because they know you care. Y'all ain't talking to me. They will love you more. You whip them till they fall asleep. When they wake back up, they coming in there trying to get a hug. Why? Because they understand that you love them. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. And how in the world, how in the world can we sit in the house of God and call ourselves Christians and call ourselves believers and being connected to God and we are allowing our communities and all these generations to bust hell wide open. We got the power. We got the answers. But we got to lift our voices and get connected with people. Ain't a whole lot of clapping right there. I need you to look down your row and turn your row. It might require you to get up and be a little uncomfortable. I know you're in church and that pew might be a little nice and soft or whatever. But I'm going to need you to get up and uh, everybody on your row and say, let's be intentional about getting connected. Come on, culture is changing in this joint. Culture in this church at this moment. Culture is happening right now. You need to get up and shake every person's hand on your row and say, let's be intentional about getting connected. You don't even know half these folk name and you sit on the same row every week. Y'all sit on the same row and worship. Let's be intentional. Let's be intentional. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. Don't take this opportunity to try to creep out. I'm almost through. I know you. Hallelujah. I've been pastoring over 20 years, but 20 years at Blessed Faith. My first church was incarcerated. Pastored that church for a couple of years. <laughs> Hallelujah. With some convicts. Praise the Lord. Convicts that were connected. Not too connected. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. So what I want you to understand is what's happening. Listen to me close. What's happening is a transition in the Holy Ghost. Our mission statement, our vision has changed. It consists of three words. Y'all ready? I just preached the first one. Connect. Grow. Sir, that's it. I, I thought I was going to get somebody in here. Is it anybody to be authentically connected to God? Is it anybody who wants to be authentically connected in healthy relationships with other people? I need to hear your voice in here. Everything is based on Matthew 22 and Matthew great commandment and the great commission. I preach part of the great commandment will shift uh, to the great commission. Grow. Grow in fellowship with God and others to become a fully developed follower of Jesus Christ. It's very strategic, very simple. Serve. To serve God, my church, the community, and others. Doesn't it all kind of flow together? Don't it all sound like all the same thing, consistent with the word of God? I prayed, I asked God, God, we need to be lined up with your word. Because if we're not lined up with your word, we will be in it. And I asked God, why is it that some of the things that we do seem like it's ineffective? People get excited, but there's no change. He said, because you, 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 you got a few bars. You got a few bars. What does that mean? We had a bar of worship. We have a bar of serve. And then we would, we would utilize the bar of serve. Hallelujah. But we didn't grow. 
because we wouldn't participate in discipleship. We wouldn't participate, you know, in Bible study. We wouldn't participate in school. You know, I believe what it says. <laughs> if you don't need Sunday school, Sunday school need you. <laughs> Forget y'all. Uh, nah, you know, I understand some people, they don't, they don't like to get up. They like to sleep in or whatever. I, I get it. Sleep in on Saturday. Hallelujah. Go to bed Friday night instead of going out. Y'all ain't going to say nothing right there. <laughs> it's in here thick. Hallelujah. So say it with me. Connect and serve. And so we have to have the ability to be able to first serve God. Then to serve your church, the community, and the world. These concepts and principles are going to help us grow a movement in God, not just in this ministry, but in our community and the world. But the first step is to get connected to God. We're standing. Before I pray, I... I want to challenge you, and I think it'd be full, because I have a vision. I think this altar is getting ready to be full because I have a vision. I want you to ask yourself, how's your connection? How are your bars? I need you to be honest. If it's on low, I need you to get down here. I need you to move fast. I don't need you to be worried about what your neighbor going to say. I need you to come get plugged in. I need you to come get connected. Folk going to judge you anyway. Forget people at this moment. This is about you. You need to leave with bars today. When you walk away from this altar today, you're going to have the confession, I got bars. I can do all things. The amazing thing, thank you brothers, the amazing thing about phones and iPads and whatever, every now and again, you have to download an upgrade. You got to download an upgrade because security has gotten a little bad, that they've learned to hack past the security measures that had been put in place. But most of the time, you can't download the upgrade until you get connected to the Wi-Fi. And then you get connected to the Wi-Fi and you try to download and something happens. It says that you have to have more than 50% battery life in order to upgrade. In other words, you don't have enough juice to get the download. What am I saying? It ain't that God ain't speaking. You don't have enough juice. Your prayer life is falling off. Your study life has fallen off. You ain't fasted since we called the last fast in January. And some of you didn't fast then. It's my birthday weekend. I ain't fasting. Your birthday weekend, you probably need to fast to be grateful that God gave you life. To honor God. You had plans of turning up anyway. Y'all ain't saying amen. Y'all forget this this the kicker. Y'all forget that some of you accepted your pastor as a Facebook friend. <laughs> I, I'm gonna get unfriended today, huh, Bill? <laughs> and then you, you know, some of you think you're slick. So you save on Facebook, but you cut up on Snapchat. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing in here. <laughs> Your Instagram account is foul, but your, your Facebook is saved. I need bars, whoever you are. 
come onto this altar. I'm about to pray. It's some more of you. Don't be embarrassed. Get to this altar. Come on, my juice is low. My juice is low. Come on, there's some folks in here that are saved, but your juice is low. I need you to come down in a testimony to those that are down here that it ain't always sin that brings us to the altar. Hallelujah. I got to get some bars. I got to get some bars. I got to get some bars. We getting ready to pray. Come on, lift your hands on this altar. Lift them. Lift them.